fleshly impulse. Because the Spirit of the Lord is, this may cut a little bit, may sting a little bit. But how many believe you sometimes you get into a little sting? Amen. I was taught to listen to the Word of God. I was taught to show respect to a man of God. I was taught to show respect to the church. I didn't bring soda water into the church. I didn't bring candy in to chew on. I didn't, I didn't bring gum in to chew on. I didn't bring stuff in the church. I, I was taught the church is a place of worship. Yes. I, I didn't have a suit when I come to the church. I had a, a just, uh, you know, blue denims and then ragged and a feed sack shirt. But my aunt, I said, wash it. Uh, Sister Christine is uh, here, my first cousin, and I'm so glad to see her be able to be back in church because you have been through a long, dark night. Chris, but it's great to see you yeah. back in the work of God, Amen. sitting back there faithful as you've always been. But she would say to me, you know, they fed the cows and they took a, a sack and made me a shirt out of it. Yeah. That's what they did. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 I didn't like it, so I put me a little Dick Tracy thing on it. Uh, I was a little boy. I, 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 Dick Tracy was a hero. Uh, he was a cop. And I, I thought he was a great guy. Uh, but, uh, you know, but I found out later he was a comic strip. But uh, I, I, I just, uh, I'd I, I come to church and I'd say, well, if I'm gonna wear that feed sack shirt, you iron it and you press it and you wash it because I want it to be the best. Well, God saw my heart. Yes. God saw my heart and moved me from that to something else. Amen. Because I loved the Lord, I loved his people, and I had a fear of God. Yes. The Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Yes. I fear God in this place. Yes, I fear what kind of spirit I sit in here with. Yes, I fear my attitude. Amen. I fear my spirit. Right. If I'm not right, Lord, get me right. Yes. Brother Young has got a message on overcoming and on the new man versus the old man. God give that to him. I've listened to him through the years. And I'm telling you, the old man will destroy you. And I'm not talking about your husband either. <laughs> a woman come to Brother Sowers, and she got the message on killing the old man. And her husband wasn't coming to church. She worked so hard to get him to come to church. And he heard, she'd heard this message on killing the old nature, the old Adamic nature, the old man. She got untestified. First night he was there. I thank God I am out to slay my old man. I am out to, I'm out to kill my old man. He was sitting back there in the back, never heard it before. Well, needless to say, there was probably fireworks after the service, but uh, she did get him in the church and he was saved by the grace of God. But I'm working on this old man right here because I believe that this old man has to die. Yes. But the new man has to live. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. I say the new man has to live. And we're living in this day right now when the fear of the Lord needs to be put back into the church. And young people, I would, I would no more think of sitting back here and texting somebody up here. In fact, I don't have my cell phone on here in the service. Um, I don't have it going. I would no more think of up here uh, while a man of God is speaking and teaching and talking, I'm busy trying to pick up a romance back here, or a romance from here up here. Uh, uh, the, see, the, the, the church of the living God is to be a holy place. Yeah. It's to be a place. How can I go to a holy place without a holy place to go there? Right. Yeah. Amen. Right. Do you think I can just jump out of the world into heaven? No, sir. Do you believe there's a place I need to be to go to heaven? Yeah. I just, I, that, that's why I'm here. That's why I don't forsake the assembly of myself together. See, because you think I can just live in the world and then just go to heaven? No, I can't do it. I have to be in a preparatory school, and that's the church. That's the assembly. And these people that are staying out of the services deliberately, putting something else ahead of it, ahead of the work of God. Uh, God alone will have to deal with them because uh, you can't, you can't go to heaven without being in a preparatory place to prepare you and to get you ready 
to go there because heaven is a holy place. Amen. Heaven is a righteous place. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. Isn't it? Yes. You still believe that? Yes. That heaven is a place where there's no sin, there's no division, there's no evil. But heaven is a clean, holy place. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. And I need to go into a preparatory place where I can go and be with the Lord in days to come. Bless the name of the Lord. So we'll teach one another. We'll work on each other. We'll bear with one another. We'll pray for one another. We'll love each other. Uh, we'll stay together. Uh, someone said coming together is the beginning. Uh, staying together is progress. And working together is success. Uh, all right, and let you close out here. The dinner is ready in the dining room. Uh, verse 31, I want you to get this. I'm going to let you take it home and meditate on it and study it. Uh, Matthew 25 and 31, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Praise the name of the Lord. And the throne of Christ's glory is going to be the bride of Jesus Christ and the wise virgins right beside the bride, all holy, all righteous, all overcomers, 144,000 members of the bride and multitudes without number in the bride company, the wise virgins. What a company that's going to be around the throne of glory when he does come again. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> All right. Uh, I hope that I've said something profitable, something good. Amen. Amen. Have you enjoyed the day? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. Thank you for putting up with me. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for listening to me. Because without you, uh, I, I, I would have no work. And without me, you would have no work. That's right. So both of us are working. Working. I'm going to keep on working. Eyes are up the prize. That'll reach me by. Keep on working till he comes, till he comes. There's nothing in this world worth turning around, you see. My eyes are on the prize that have reached me by and by. And I'm going to keep on working till he comes. Oh. I thank God for this church. Amen. I want you to say with me, we're blessed to be together. We're blessed to have each other. We're blessed because God loves us. Praise the name of the Lord. Sister Lorraine has a vote. I just have a comment. A comment. I want... He'll get you the mic. <laughs> it's just a little comment how much I enjoyed the two sisters getting up and singing. Yes. I thought, how beautiful to hear another language yes. and to see two sisters brave enough to get up and express themselves, Wasn't which made me think of a little comment. Uh, of course, their language was different, and I was trying to figure it out. And I, I remembered this little thing. Someone was uh, criticizing um, someone for something they were doing, some event. And this guy looked at them and said, Do you, uh, they said, well, you're just an old, old, um, um, <coughs> uh, uh, 
Pollock. You're just a dirty old Pollock. And so the policeman responded by saying, do you speak so Polish? And he said, no. He said, well, I do. <laughs> So, no matter what language you are, you know something someone else says. That's right. And I know something that they may not have known or they may have. I'm not even going to be, I don't know what I am, a Heinz 67 mixture. My family started out in France, wound up in England and then America. But I don't know what I am, a Heinz 67 mixture. But, but let me tell you something. I've been reading a book called The Ragamuffin Gospel. I read some of it to the Monday Night Bible study. Ragamuffin. You know what a ragamuffin is? You know what a ragamuffin is? When I was a little boy, I got a definition of ragamuffin. We were in the house, and we didn't have father or mother there. Four children alone, 29 miles out in the woods. And I was keeping my three siblings going with what I earned at the Oyster House. And I was nine years old. My father was in the hospital in Lake City. My mother deserted us. And there was a family that lived down the, down the wooded path where the panthers screamed at night, the woods. Did you have a restroom in the house? It was called the outhouse. Are you familiar? And so on. But, <laughs> but we walked down the road, and this little uh, lady, I never will forget her, she stood in the yard, and we were dirty, and we were not very well clothed, because we had no father or mother. They were gone. I didn't see any welfare people. I didn't see any children's protective service there. It was the woods and us. <coughs> and this lady looked at us and said, why, you're just a little bunch of ragamuffins. <laughs> I know what it is. <laughs> Sounds to me like a ragamuffin doesn't have much value. Well, I was a ragamuffin. <laughs> I'm being clothed in the king's clothes. I'm in this suit. This is not. That's another garment. I'm getting a wedding garment on. I'm trying to put it on you. I want you to get the wedding garment on. Hallelujah! It's made of fine linen. Yes. It'll keep you from making a rock of muffin. Yes. 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 <laughs> Where nobody thinks much of you. But he does. Yes. He does. He does. So I, I really enjoy the thought that I'm being transformed, I'm being changed from a rag of muffin into something. Yes. You were talking about when we come when we come here that we should be changed, you know? That you said that when we come here that we shouldn't leave like we came, that we should expect from the Lord and be changed. And it reminded me one of my daughter's favorite our daughter's favorite sayings is you can stand in a garage twenty four seven and you will never become a car. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> you can be in a, a garage 24 hours 7 and never become a car. Well, I won't comment on that. I think you've got that gospel. I want to say I'm so glad to see all of you. I love all of you. We're getting ready for this great weekend coming up Wednesday night, Tuesday night, Monday night. But this great weekend of Christmas Eve. We'll be together here Christmas Eve in worship. I know some of you have to be with families. I understand that. Some of you will be traveling on the highway and be in uh, various states. I understand that. I'll be praying for you. I love you. And be with your loved ones. And have a great time. And love the Lord. And love to
together as a family. And we understand that. But you that are home, you that are here, will be having uh, Saturday night, and then we'll be having Sunday morning one service at 10 o'clock, where the Ferris is giving way on uh, bilingual service, and the whole church that's home here, and those who want to come, 10 o'clock, we'll meet together in fellowship, those that desire to and want to, Brother Maxwell is going to fix us a lovely Christmas morning breakfast in the dining room at 9 o'clock, and we'll, I, I plan to be there in fellowship, but you, you may have something hinder you, but you're welcome. That's what we have planned for this day, uh, is worship 10 to 12, um, and then the rest of the day is yours to enjoy with family, you that are staying home, you that are not going out of the city, you that don't have family tie-ups Christmas morning. Uh, you're welcome to come and be with us at 10 o'clock. I wanted to say that while you're all here, get that in your mind. I, I, I'm so glad to see everyone here, and uh, we love you. And this has been a great day in Christ, and there's been some things from the Word come forth, and the Spirit has come. Uh, I want to say, Brother George yes, Perez, I love Brother George Perez, and I'm glad to see him here, where he belongs. This is his mother, this is his work, this is his church. And Brother George, we love you. We love you. I quoted a little poem to Brother Dean. I said, they drew a circle to keep me out. A rebel, a heretic, a thing to flout. But love and I had a wit to win. So we drew a circle that took them in. Amen. That's good. Somebody wants to keep you out, just draw a circle. Take it all away. That's what Jesus does. That's why he transformed a rag of my family. And this is worthwhile. I praise you. Paul. You have those letters ready? Would you get ready, four of you brethren, or maybe uh, on each pew? I want to give you my Christmas greeting, my letter. I don't send Christmas cards. But I pass out a letter each year to the church and to those who are here expressing our sentiments to you. And we'll do it quickly and then we'll go to the dining room and we'll have. And I, I want to say how much I, and then we have candy, our Christmas candy for our children. Brother Mike Kiernan and Sister Candy prepared that, got it together, bought it, paid for it, and it's for our children. I have seen big children get in on it, but for our children. All your children 